Hey friends, I've really been loving some designer high-end pieces that I think we can do from thrift store finds for a whole lot less. I have really been loving all of these warm rattan pieces we've been seeing from some of the designers such as Carly Page, Amber Lewis, and Kathy Ko. And I wondered, can we dupe something from a thrift store? I started looking at these lamps that were upwards of $500. So on one of my thrift runs, I found this little gem and thought it had great potential. I knew right away that I wanted to eliminate the green color. Although I love green, I was looking for something just a little bit more warmer and to add a little bit of gold to it. I started by taping off the top and the bottom of this lamp, which were both wood, and then added on two coats of a black matte chalk paint. I just painted this on and let it dry until all of the green at the top around the neck of the lamp and the base were covered. Once that was covered, I decided that the rattan needed a little bit of love. It was a little bit dry, so I used some antiquing wax mixed with 50-50 water and I just began to brush it on all over the rattan with a sponge brush, just making sure to get in all those cracks and crevices. This allowed me to condition this rattan and really deepen and warm it up like a lot of the colors we've been seeing. After the lamp had dried, I went in and added a little bit of European gold rub and buff. I wanted to have some of that gold enhanced with the black and the brown of the rattan just to give it a really rich, warm color. I did this very haphazardly with a small paintbrush until I just liked the gold brushing throughout. I was trying to capture all of those warm tones and really give this lamp an elevated look. I paid $20 for the lamp at the thrift store, and after it was all said and done, that was all I had in it, this beautiful lamp for $20. All of the other things, including the shade, I had at home. What do you think? How did we do? Designer artwork is another area that could be quite expensive. I've had my eye on this McGee Co. wood-blocked botanical print, but a 24 by 24 was $440, a little bit more than my pocketbook could take. I thought we could try to make a dupe for a lot less. I found this print at my local Goodwill for $3. So I brought it home, cleaned it up, and began the process. I removed the hanging back first so that I could access the mat and the print that was intact. Using an X-Acto knife, I cut along the inner line to remove the paper backing from the print to have access to the base below. I then removed all of the staples, and there were quite a few, lifting those up and removing most of them so that I could then take out the print and the mat that were below. I did leave a few of those staples to secure the new print that I put back in. Once I removed this print, I realized that the mat was actually adhered to the heavy pressed wood print. Again, using my X-Acto knife, I carefully cut along the inner edge to remove the print, leaving me only with the mat. The McGee Co. mat had an antique textured finish to it. So again, using a 50-50 wash of water and my antique wax and a paper towel, I simply blotted on top of the white textured mat, giving it that antiqued look. I continued this process, lightly adding until I got the desired color and effect that I wanted to try to replicate as close as possible Guy and Co. print. So once I was satisfied with the way the matte looked and it had that similar texture, I went back with a Sharpie pen and outlined where I had cut the other print previously, just to ensure I had that clean edge. After that, I took my rub and buff squirted it again directly onto the wood of the frame and just brushed it in. I chose to leave the inner rim closest to the glass and the outer edge the black of the frame, making only the top layer the gold. The mat had dried as well as the frame. I placed the mat back into the glass and began to tape down my print. I purchased my print off of an Etsy shop and then had it printed at Walgreens for $10. It is almost an exact duplication of the McGee & Co. botanical print. After that, just to make everything look finished, I used brown wrapping paper to finish out that back. 
hot gluing it to the back side of the frame just to give everything a professional and clean look. I think this finishes off everything. Even though no one sees it, it just gives you that designer high-end look that you were striving for to begin with. Once I had that all secured and hot glued to the back of the frame, I then went through and punch hold where the old hangers had been located so that I could reattach those to the back of the frame. All in all, I think it turned out pretty close. Let me know what you think.